Money is weird. We're taught early on that it's important to save your pennies, to not go spending it all in one place. Money is supposed to be a source of happiness, security, success, comfort. But money's also taboo. It's impolite to talk about. And debt? Well, it does seem like everyone has at least some of it, but probably better to keep quiet about it. Keep your worries to yourself, because nobody wants to hear it. And that's how I felt about money for years. It was this thing that I was supposed to get and make as much of it as I possibly could, and then that way I'd be successful, secure, and I would have made it. I did everything I was supposed to do. I got the degree, got the job, got the apartment in the big city, got the clothes, got the vacations, and oh yeah, I got the debt. Like, did I ever get the debt? I focused my energy on looking the part, and I thought with every swipe of my credit card, I was bringing myself one step closer to buying what I thought would be success, to making it, real adulthood. I loved lying to myself, and I was convinced that as long as I looked wealthy, then my actual wealth would someday follow. I was constantly worried about money, always scolding myself to get better, to do better, to save more, to pay off my debt, and then I would turn around, swipe my credit card, and shop the pain away. I had nothing to show for my actions except for a closet full of clothes with the tag still on, unused makeup, and a gigantic student loan that I just loved to ignore. I was sick of always feeling out of control of my money and of myself. And it was around that time when I made this video talking about something called low buy, and I found out I wasn't alone. When I shared things like my emotional spending journey, how I routinely mismanaged my money, and started being an open book about what my life looked like versus what it actually was, so many of you started to share the same struggles. We started a community. We started talking about it. We started to take control. And we started to change. <laughs> I'm debt free! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> so if you're watching this today and you're feeling like I did back then, lost, overwhelmed, a bit unsure of yourself, I'm here to tell you that you can do it and that it is possible. But if you're unsure of how to get started, here are my seven pieces of advice that helped me get to where I am now. My first piece of advice is to know where you stand. You need to know where you are before you know where you're going. Find out how much you make, how much you spend, how much you owe, and how much you can pay each month. It's scary, it sucks, it hurts, and it will take some sacrifices. But the main thing I learned is that knowledge is truly power. And knowing where you stand financially at the beginning of this journey and as you go through it will give you knowledge, power over your money, and a confidence that you didn't know was there before. Tip number two is to start budgeting. Budgeting truly changed my life. Yes, it's boring. Yes, it's tedious. But it's been, without a doubt, the most powerful tool in my debt-free journey. The budget gives you knowledge of where that money is going, and it also gives you the power to tell your money to go in that place. You may not always stick to your budget every month, you may go over, you may go under sometimes, or you may just be way off. But the whole point is, is that you're doing it and you're starting to be conscious and intentional about where you put your money. And if you wanna put that on debt and become debt free, then the budget is really gonna help you do that. The third piece of advice I have for you is if you can, increase your income. I fully recognize the privileged position that I'm in when it came to my personal finance and debt-free journey. It really does play a huge role in how I was able to pay off my debt in the time that I did. At first, I took relief pharmacy shifts and started working extra in my pharmacy gig. And then later on, it was my YouTube channel and the support from you guys that really helped me in my debt repayment journey. But that's what I did. Use your skills and what you're good at to your advantage to find ways to increase your income that you can put towards your debt. The amount of time it takes will be different for everybody. The thing to keep in mind is the faster you get out of debt, the faster you can start building your own wealth and your own financial health. My fourth tip would be to talk about it. 
When we normalize talking about debt and money, then I think more people will feel empowered to take control of their debt and their money. Debt doesn't have to be this taboo, scary thing. It's not an indicator that you're bad with money. It's not a sign that you failed. And a lot of people have debt, but we have a lot of fear and stigma around talking about it. And within talking about it, you can start to build a support system. Although it's possible, I gotta say, a debt repayment journey will be really hard to do all on your own. So having someone to talk to, to bounce ideas off of, to be your support system, to be your anchor in this, or even just to offer a simple, you got this, that's gonna be worth its weight in gold or your interest rate. My fifth tip would be to remember your why, like every day if you have to. As much as you need to, picture your life without debt. And picture your reason of why you're doing this. Is it your kids? Is it to give yourself more options, more time? Your why can be whatever you want it to be, but it has to be big enough and strong enough to carry you through all the hard times, all the uncertainty, and it has to be able to push you through when you want to give up, because you'll want to give up a lot. So your why is your safety net, and it's the push that you'll need to keep going. Tip number six is to stay the course. And what I mean is that people will think that you're kind of weird. They will think that you are doing something wrong with your money. They'll ask you why you're not just putting that money towards investments because the interest rate is lower. They'll tell you that you're doing it wrong, that the math doesn't make sense, that this way will be better and faster, or they'll tell you to give up because it's impossible and everybody has debt. You will get confused, you'll question yourself, the noise will get loud and you'll wanna give up. But keep going. You'll get there, you can do it, and believe me, it's worth it. And my final tip is to just get started. There will never be a perfect time. Life is never gonna get less expensive. And if you make no changes now, your money problems will not magically go away as soon as you get that raise. It doesn't have to be a Monday. It doesn't have to be the first of the month. Just start. And even if you can only come up with an extra $10 to put down on your debt, that's an extra $10 closer to that zero balance. Do what you can and just take that first step forward. The truth of the matter is, I made a mess for myself and I had to clean it up. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't fun, but it was worth it. I'm free. And before I wrap this video up, I just wanna thank you all for your support, for your words of encouragement. I really couldn't have done this without you. Like quite literally, I could not have done this without you. The support, the comments, the sharing the words of encouragement, sharing your own stories, and sharing with me and each other of how we've committed to healing our own financial health and well-being. So many of you have messaged me sharing how you've paid off your credit cards, you've paid off your student loans, you're debt free, you sold a bunch of stuff, and you just share how you've made moves to change your own life. So quite literally, I could not have done it without you. So thank you. And if you're watching this and just getting started or maybe thinking about getting started, just start, just do it, you got this. Ha, 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 ha.